On my website, um, there have been a number of videos already um, where I've basically talked about what's in the pipeline, uh, potential treatments for Parkinson's disease that are coming through, and um, where will we find the cure for Parkinson's disease. And uh, an, a, a number of these videos have mentioned or discussed uh, where the pharmaceutical industry are putting a lot of their resources at the moment, and that is targeting the abnormal synuclein proteins. This is alpha synuclein. There is more information about this alpha synuclein also uh, on videos on my website. But in essence, alpha synuclein is a protein that's supposed to be inside normal brain cells. But just like if you uh, take your clothes and you tangle them and throw them into a drawer, the drawer won't work properly. And this is what we see in the cells that are dying in the Parkinson's brain tangles of alpha synuclein protein. Now, what we don't know is whether they are good guys or bad guys. So for example, it is possible that something goes wrong inside the cell and you build up something that might be a toxic alpha synuclein protein, which we call the Lewy body, and this might cause cell death. It is also possible that uh, the process of forming a Lewy body is actually the cell trying to protect itself. But leaving that nuance aside, because there is a target there, there has been a lot of emphasis over the last few years about aiming to do something to stop that alpha synuclein protein. And the way that we've uh, seen people do this and approach the problem is to use humanized monoclonal antibodies. So just again to explain that. Antibodies are the things that our bodies produce when we're under threat. So if we have an infection, we produce antibodies against it. Sometimes we can see that antibodies can be bad for us. So for example, there are a number of conditions like diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, where our body creates antibodies that fight our cells. In our way of dealing with some of those other diseases, we've come up with techniques to produce these monoclonal antibodies, if you like, fighting back so that we can target something specifically against, against a, 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 an agent in the body that we don't want. And this has been successfully used across a range of conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, like inflammatory bowel disease. And a lot of emphasis has been going on over the last few years in the Parkinson's world, producing these antibodies that would fight synuclein. And there have been different ways of thinking about this. The idea of stopping the synuclein from aggregating in the first place, or indeed based on some of the other hypotheses that are out there where perhaps synuclein might spread from cell to cell, and um, the idea of stopping that synuclein from traveling between cell and, if you like, transfecting across through the brain. And this leads me uh, to some work that has just been uh, released. Um, it hasn't been published, so unfortunately I don't have all of the details, but I thought it was important enough that we should get some information out there uh, for people uh, who wanted to know more. So there has been uh, a press release from a company, and uh, essentially this is one of the big industry companies, I think Roche, in partnership with a company called Prothena, um, have been uh, doing a trial, and they initially reported a smaller trial, uh, what we call a phase one study, uh, suggest suggesting that a new antibody, prasinizumab, um, apologies if I pronounced that wrong, there are also a set of letters and numbers that go with this name, um, would be safe, tolerated in people with Parkinson's. In actual fact, some of the measures that they use in those studies, for example, measuring the level of synuclein protein in blood tests, also showed a change, suggesting that this was a good approach for us to take to a phase two trial. And this is uh, the data that's just been released uh, in the form of a press release, and uh, the details uh, are down below on the screen for you to have a look at this. And you can also check out where the site is, re uh, where the trial has been registered, uh, where clinical trials uh, are registered online, if you want to see more details. But in essence, uh, the plan with this study, uh, as far as I can see, is that over 300 patients, I think 316, across 65 different sites in America and across Europe uh, were recruited into a trial. I think half of them got placebo and half of them got different doses of this drug um, to see whether it could influence the progression of Parkinson's disease. And the progression uh, measured across physical progression, so how the symptoms of Parkinson's disease changed, 
uh, where I think they were aiming to see a difference at the end of 12 months that was significant. And I think they were aiming for over a 30% change. That is to say, not an improvement in your Parkinson's disease, but as this is a disease modifying therapy, if you had a placebo, the anticipation is you would be worse than if you'd received the trial drug. And that difference would be the thing that statistically we were looking to see to give us more confidence. The trial was set up uh, so that patients received the drug um, via a drip um, once every four weeks for the course of a year. And then when those patients had all finished their year's therapy, the idea would be that they would be taken into a, an extension phase of the trial. And in actual fact, during that extension phase, I think that the idea was to be to keep the blinding uh, in place. Um, but everybody who was on placebo would then receive a dose, uh, different strengths of the dose of the active drug to see how it would go for a longer period. And of course, the aim there would be to say, okay, well, if you had the drug from the start of the trial, from baseline for the next couple of years, would you do better than the guys that were on placebo for the first 12 months? So that, that hasn't been reported yet. But unfortunately, uh, the data from the press release suggests that for the first 12 months of therapy, there does not seem to be an impact of this new drug on the disease course in Parkinson's disease. And obviously this is uh, very disappointing uh, to many of us uh, who are looking to see if we can get a breakthrough. Um, but I would uh, put the caveat that there are lots of secondary analyses that tend to go on with these trials. And sometimes the primary outcome may not be as encouraging as you'd like to see. And it may well be that there are secondary measures and also a longer period of treatment because this of course is a very slowly progressing disease and the patients included in this trial were very early into the course of their disease. So I think they were in the first two years since diagnosis and I think most of them were not taking any medications at all. And if they were, they were only taking a thing called a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. So not replacing the dopamine in the brain with a levodopa containing drug. In addition, it's worth noting that there are also a number of other monoclonal antibody trials that are going on with different agents at the moment and they're yet to re report. And there are a whole bunch of other studies that are using other approaches, targeting, if you like, through different mechanisms rather than using monoclonal antibodies, uh, the pathways that we think are involved in Parkinson's disease. So although I think this is quite disappointing on the face of it for a first trial, I think we have to be very, uh, very mindful of the fact that this is what we've seen in the world of Alzheimer's disease, which has been doing this probably this type of trial unsuccessful for 20 years. What we need to be able to do is to take heart from the fact we're able to get into this territory and start doing these trials. But we also need to bear in mind that if they're not working, that we might need to change our strategy rather than following that path that we've seen in the world of Alzheimer's, where we keep repeating the same sort of trials. So I think overall, uh, I think these are encouraging data, but I think we're just going to have to keep watching this space.